Hi, and welcome to Milgat Farms. My name is Kevin, along with my beautiful wife, Emily. We're the proud owners of Virginia's only USDA certified organic maple syrup farm. And that's pretty cool. We do a lot more than maple syrup here on the farm. Uh, we have a B&B, &B, we do some, a bunch of different kinds of animals. Um, and today's animal we're gonna talk about are chickens. I did a video last season on a chicken tractor that I built. It's right behind me. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like a year later. And I'm also gonna give you the dimensions of, of what I built. And if I made any changes, what would they be? Because we all build things and we think, oh gosh, I wish I'd, I built this in or added that. Well, I'm gonna show you a couple of things that I wish I did. And maybe you guys can incorporate that into your design. I built this with just stock two by threes. And I've made a few errors here and there on my carpentry, but covered them all up and it worked out really, really well. Throughout the season, we didn't have any we're saying we didn't have any. We didn't have many problems with this design. You can see it's kind of panelized. So I built the side panel first, and I even went as far as tacking in the Tyvek material. Now that's not truly Tyvek, but it's kind of like Tyvek. On this side, it's black. And if you look on the inside, let me show you. <clears throat> if you look on the inside, it's white. Something else to note is the distance of like the thirds, it's one, two, three. We have approximately two thirds of it that's covered and we have a third of it uncovered. And if I did it again, I may make this a little bit bigger, let's say 75, 25, because up here, if you guys can see, these are our mountains over here and we're in a valley and as a result, we get a lot of winds. So the better you can protect your birds, especially if you're doing early season or late season birds, the better off they're gonna be. Another tip that I would offer you guys is when you're running your tractors through your lawn, consider where the winds are so that you're not running or pushing that tractor so that it will catch the wind sort of like an envelope or a, or a kite. If it does, now it could move it, most likely not gonna happen, but the problem you're gonna have is that wind's gonna come and hit your birds, it's gonna make them cold. They don't need that. So you would wanna try to run perpendicular to the wind. One of the things I really liked about the design, guys, is this right here. You notice how it goes up and down? So, let me show you. I wanna get my birds out. It's that time of the year, we're getting ready to process. I bring it down. I actually put a bungee cord down at the bottom. I'm gonna suggest a cup hook or um, a little latch hook. That's all you need. And it'll, it'll hook it. That way, when you're reaching in, you don't get smacked in the head because that's the last thing you want is to get clobbered when you're trying to get your chickens. But this thing, it goes back down, it's very easy. And then when it's time to move this thing, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna walk it away. I'm just gonna pull it and go. So let's take a look at the chicken wire. We actually had a predator come in and, and take, and didn't take my chickens, but broke the, broke the wire. I couldn't believe that happened, guys. So one of the things I'm gonna suggest that you build the height of this to match your wire, and you wanna build it about I want to say a quarter to a half inch taller. This wire does not have to loop over the top. It just has to come to the top. You want to buy your roll. The larger the roll of wire you buy, the cheaper it's going to be. So if you know somebody else that's going to build a chicken tractor, go with them and buy a bigger roll. This tractor was pretty much built with dimensional lumber. It was two by threes. All of them were eight foot. You can do this with two by fours, but I'm telling you what you're gonna build is gonna be really heavy. And you're not gonna be as inclined to wanna move it as often as you should when it's as heavy as it is. This is a steel metal. Um, and what I did was I didn't cut this metal until I was ready or after I'd built the whole structure. I laid my metal on. And if you watch that video, you saw me just use a tool and I cut, the, cut one side of it. And then eventually I had to cut this side too. Ultimately, I put duct tape around the outside edge so that if my kids walked up to it, they weren't gonna get hurt. If we measure off the inside of this two by, I'm gonna pull it to get it where I need it. This two by is 90, 92 and three quarters inches, okay? If you go out and you buy the two by threes, I'm gonna suggest that you build it in panels like I did. You could build three or four panels at a pop and then this thing will go together lickety split. Overall, and I'm gonna show you what this is, another eight foot panel, okay? So 
This one's an eight by eight by eight. I like that, that size. I typically run about 25 to 30 birds in here. I can do that because I'll move my birds twice a day. The big pin, it's just a pain in the bum to move. This is metal that I had left over from a project. If you know somebody that's built a metal building recently, most likely they have the top sheets that are protecting the sheets of metal when they arrive. And that's what I built my chicken tractor with. This is just scrap, or it's scrap to me, let me say that. It, it could have been used for some other project, but I, I repurposed it for this project and it's worked really, really well. A lot of people don't put sides on their chicken tractors. And my first chicken tractor that I built when I got out here, I put steel, like the same as the roofing material, all the way around it. Now, the problem I did with that was, sometimes my steel was a little longer than it should have been, so it caught on the ground. But the real big problem was how much it weighed. It weighed a lot more than this Tyvek material. Now, again, this is not Tyvek, but it's something like Tyvek, and it's lasted a season or two. Um, a season on this one, I've, I've had a, a different thing we call the X-Wing, where it's a metal scissor truss kind of tractor that we use for our turkeys. And I've used that for two to three years now, and that's worked really well. So that Tyvek material has lasted a, a good time, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. All right, guys, so you can see my centers are approximately 22 inches tall, okay? So I've got on this side, the way the panel is construction, you've got one on either end and two in the middle. If I were gonna build it again, I would shift this one right here up a little bit more, and I might have to put a third one in here just to give myself some rigidity, but it's not totally necessary. Since I had some extra old, since I had some old fencing, this is what I used. This is a two by four fencing. One, two, three, four, yeah, one, two. This is a two by four square panel fencing. It keeps any predator out. I'm gonna to recommend to anybody to put some kind of wire on it. If you use chicken wire, hey, that's fine too. It doesn't matter. I just had extra and that's why I used it. I also stapled it in. This does not have to be with screws. Looking at this one right here, I used roofing screws. I don't know why I didn't use staples back then, but I used roofing screws and it worked. So some of the key points that I think are important are size. If you're gonna run 50 birds in one of these tractors, you're gonna want about a 10 or a 12 by 12, okay? If you're gonna run a little less than that between say 30 and 40, you're gonna, it could be a 10 by 10. I'm running a little more than 30 birds in my tractors and I'm moving them twice a day. So that's what you gotta think about. One thing about the height of this particular tractor is that it lends itself really well to turkeys. We raised some turkeys in the chicken tractors this year, or last year rather, and it worked out really well. So last year, we brooded our turkeys and chickens and everybody in the barn, brought them out on pasture, especially the turkeys, and I put these on, on pasture, oh gosh, maybe for two to three weeks in this chicken tractor until they got big enough where they wouldn't crawl through my fence because I don't have turkey fence. I use uh, an old sheep fence that I've got, this wire mesh sheep fence, and I don't want my turkeys to get out, so I just put them in, these, in this container or this. So I put them in this chicken tractor and it worked really well. So some key things to think about here is you don't have to worry about your metal. Put the metal on last and cut it to fit. You want a little bit overhang on the back, a little bit overhang on the sides would be okay, but you also got to consider you're going to be walking around this. And if you're walking around it or your kids are walking around it, there's a possibility you can get cut. Be sure to put something on it like a foam or maybe some duct tape. I really like the design of where we cantilever it down. It works well because then I can lift it up and move it. You can use chicken wire on the top. That's not a problem. I just had extra wire and that's why I used it. If I do another one and I've got chicken wire, maybe I'll use chicken wire on it. All right, now here's a tip that I haven't done that I am gonna do the next time I have chickens. And that is when I build my panel, let me show you where I wanna build another panel. So you're gonna go in here and you're gonna to try to get your chickens out of here, right? Now you can do it with a net and it's still gonna be hateful, but what you can do is the night before, you leave your chickens out, you don't feed them the night before. That way they're kinda, of, they're definitely hungry, their stomachs are empty and they're ready to be processed. But that doesn't mean you can't trick them. So what I'm gonna do on processing day is I'm gonna have a little scoop of feed with me, then I'm gonna put a little feed down here in their, in their trough, and I'm gonna put a panel right there. Cause that's what I didn't do in the past. So I had to 
I sent my kid under there. <laughs> He's a, he was four years old. He was shooting up in there grabbing chickens. And it was fun, but not necessary. It could be easily built, just a small panel with some chicken wire on it, so that after you put your feet in here, put your panel in, and now you're only arguing with them in this space versus everything under there. But you can call that a pro tip. I'm not a pro, but that seems like a good pro tip to me. To give you an understanding of how tall this is, from the base to the top of the panel is right at 25 inches. So your inside dimension of the upright on this particular model is 22 inches, okay? So you've got three uprights on the front, three uprights on the back. No, I'm wrong. You've got four on the front because you've got your end pieces. So it's one, two, three, and four. And the sides are made the same way. So guys, the overall width is eight feet. And what I did in this particular design was I put my front panel, I made it a full eight foot. So I didn't have to cut anything. And these pieces have to be cut down to 93 inches so they'll rest on the top plates. Does that make sense? Now you might wanna know what the distance is here. So I'm just gonna pull a measurement these outside boards are 64 inches long. And this is a factor of a 60-40 split or a 75-25 split. If I did this again, I would make my opening a little bit shorter. All right guys, here's something I want you to consider. When you kick this thing down, you want it to lay flat, right? And if you're gonna lay it flat, these could only be so long. You want them about two inches shorter here. So we've got 24 inches. The overall height of this thing is 27 inches. So you want it a couple inches shorter so that in case there were some tall grass here, you can get that thing to flip up all the way. Let me show you what I mean. Okay. If I had a bunch of tall grass here, it's not going to come all the way up. It's just going to kind of fold itself in and not work. In fact, you could probably make this an inch or so, maybe a couple inches shorter than what it is. And again, these are, they're about 64 and a quarter inches long. And that works, that works really well. The other factor I, I considered when I was building this was what does it take when I lift it up to start walking backwards and not hit my foot on that? And I could actually come in a little bit more if I wanted to. What I've got is a good balance. This adds some weight. This is not a lot, but once you get it up in the air, it stays. Well, it's not gonna stay if there's a wind, let me tell you that. To correct that, I use a bungee cord when I'm pulling my chickens out or putting them in. But in my other chicken tractors, I've used uh, like a gate hook or a door latch hook, one of these little eyelets and a little hook, and that works well too. So again, the measurements here are 20, nope, that's not 22. Yeah, it is, 22 inches. If I did this again, I would make this 23 inches, okay? Or 22 and a half. And the reason I would do that is, you've got this band on the top and the bottom that you could staple to in between this board right here. That would be a whole lot stronger than what I have. Now what I have works, but it would have been a cleaner and easier build. Let me say that. So guys, you can see I've got one tractor over there I built three or four years ago. This is the tractor that we're talking about now that I built last season. And these two tractors, my friend Jesse built. There are some differences. The, his wheels are smaller and I could upgrade those. And if I use them again this year or next, I certainly will upgrade them because they sit so low to the ground on the back here that they'll rub on the ground. Another thing that I like about his is that he gave some overhang. Now he did not have the black Tyvek or the white on the inside. I added that later. If you're not gonna have anything on the inside to protect your birds, a little more overhang is a good idea. Now after a year's worth of use, I believe this has done pretty well. This guy over here has got about four years on it and I broke it the other, last year when I was bringing it out here. Other than that, I gotta tell you, I haven't had many problems with it except the fact that it's heavy. Cause you notice there's metal all the way around this thing. 
And that thing is a beast. Holds a lot of birds, but it's still a beast. So thanks a lot guys for watching our video. We really appreciate it. We hope you're enjoying them as much as we enjoy making them for you. When I originally built this, I had a good time building it. It's been a good chicken tractor for us. We do move it twice a day, or we did for the big part of the summer, and we raised some amazing birds. And I know you will too. If you have any questions about this build or other things that we do here on the farm, just leave in the comments. You're welcome to go to millgapfarms.com and email me too. I'd, I'd be glad to help you out. Keep in mind guys, I've only been farming for about 10 years, that's it. And I've been doing chickens now for, for all of that time. I'm not a market farmer, so I'm not looking to sell hundreds and hundreds of these birds. So my goal has always been the same, to honor God with everything that I do, including raising chickens. And in doing so, we always want to raise the most healthy, delicious bird that we can. They have a great life here on the farm, and they feed our family. Guys, I think this is a great way to become food independent. The the quality of meat that you're gonna get from raising your own birds is amazing. If you're already raising birds, hey, put it in the comment. Let us know how many you raise and what you think of them. Thanks a lot for watching our videos, everybody. Consider giving us a thumbs up and also consider leaving a comment. It means a lot to us. I love reading your comments because I learn a lot from you guys. So again, thanks for watching our videos. And until next time, God bless you guys.